Hello and welcome to First Christian Church's Adult Fellowship Bible Study. We continue in our in, with our in-depth study into the book of Acts. Last time we left the 11 apostles waiting in Jerusalem in obedience to Jesus' order uh, for the Holy Spirit to arrive. And that followed uh, Jesus' uh, ascension. Pentecost. A, tw uh, a Jewish high holiday is within 10 days uh, after all the session is on a Thursday. Uh, they are gathered in the upper room praying and waiting and today's lesson focuses on the reconstitution of the 12 uh, with Peter's interpretation of prophetic uh, scripture uh, from the Psalms. So let's read Acts chapter 1 verse starting with verse 15 through the end of that chapter uh, using the new revised standard version in those days Peter stood up among the believers together the crowd numbered about 120 persons and said friends the scripture had to be fulfilled which the Holy Spirit through David foretold concerning Judas who became a guide for those who arrested him for he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in the ministry now this man acquired a field with the reward of his wickedness and falling headlong he burst open in the middle and all his bowels gushed out this became known to all the residents of Jerusalem so that the field was called by the, the in their language Hakil Adam that is field of blood for it is written in the book of Psalms let this homestead become desolate and let there be no one to live in it and let another take his position of overseer so one of the men who, who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us beginning from his baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us one of these must become the witness with us to the resurrection so they proposed to Joseph called Barsabas who was also known as Justice and Matthias then they prayed and said Lord you know everyone's heart show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go his own place and they cast lots for them and the lot fell on Matthias and he was added to the eleven apostles the opening words in those days scholars say refers to this period uh, between ascension and Pentecost that is a 10-day uh, period ascension occurred on Thursday so there is a Jewish Sabbath on the next Saturday following that Thursday plus one the following week uh, at the end of the week that Saturday which then would be followed immediately on Sunday by Pentecost, a high holy day in Judaism's, uh, Judaism of first century AD. Some scholars, but not all among would say this, suggest this activity described here likely occurred on, a first, on that first Sabbath as Peter seems to be giving a sermon to Jesus' followers. Those gathered are likely the same as some of those who will be gathered at the beginning of the next chapter, says Dr. Carl Holliday. Several scholars note interpretation of this scripture is problematic for modern Christians due mainly because Judas' story version is also given in Matthew 27, chapter 27 that is, and that the one here is very different in the details let's face it the two versions just simply do not agree says dr bart Irwin at university of north carolina chapel hill 
Furthermore, Dr. Robert Wall teaches the versions are driven by very different theological reasoning. He says we must uh, attempt to understand this Acts version in its theological setting that's being used here by Peter or, or by, by Luke, the writer. Dr. Wall says Luke in Acts sees Judas' betrayal in a theologically significant context, while Matthew seems to see it as more of a disciple's moral failure. Luke sees the failure as placing the messianic community, he says, in a theologically dangerous crisis. Consequently, the apostles must reestablish the twelve in order to be ready for God's next event as the twelve is symbolic, uh, it's a sim has symbolic symbolism in Jewish scripture and especially relevant to Israel and the reestablishment of Israel which they believe is what's going to happen. So Peter teaches them here that the Holy Spirit spoke long ago through David concerning these very events of this first century uh, apostles are now facing. That message is in Psalms and it is about Judas. It's basically his conclusion even though the name Judas doesn't occur there in Psalms. Bottom line is Judas that Judas is rejecting Jesus as the Messiah, abandoning his duties as an apostle essentially. Now Jesus through the Holy Spirit is casting lots and has picked Matthias to fill the seat or role that Judas previously held. Prophecy has been fulfilled. So that's the essence of the story. Um, scholars note. Note the author though inserts parenthetically the number 120 here. That is one, approximately 120. They are called believers in English but the word that's there in Greek is brothers and I think it's referred to as friends in the, in the scriptural variation that we just read. These are followers or disciples of Jesus, scholars conclude, is the message Luke is trying to give you. They argue as to what the significance might be of the 120. After all, 12 and 120 are very are important uh, significant events. Uh, the numbers are in Jewish history. Uh, and they say basically the number it was the number uh, you needed to have for each tribe in Israel uh, in a reconstituted to be able to have its own synagogue so you need 10 and you have the 12 uh, there's 10 meaning 10 for each apostle because each apostle represents a tribe of Israel Dr. Holliday of Emory University notes that Peter is speaking in verses 16 through 22 uh, that this speech he concludes is to highlight uh, he thinks Peter's role as an authoritative interpre interpreter of scripture which was the very job part of the job that Jesus had when he was with them and Jesus had already appointed Peter previously as their leader to be. Holiday continues, by placing Peter in this role, Luke salvages Peter's reputation, which had been destroyed essentially by him uh, denying Christ three times. While assuming the role Jesus appointed him uh, after the crucifixion, he now uh, assumes that new role. Peter has assumed the role as chief scripture interpreter and lead apostle. And he will interpret some scripture so as to fulfill uh, a Christian storyline and not necessarily the traditional Jewish interpretation of Psalms. After all, every piece of scripture uh, in the Old Testament had been interpreted by the Jewish communities. They spend lots of time doing that. So what Peter is doing, what Acts 
author has Peter doing is interpreting for a script for a Christian audience, so to be, or a future Christian audience. This starts with his interpretation of what happened to Judas, the disciple that betrayed Jesus. But Peter insists that Judas's action must be understood in light of Old Testament scriptures uh, expectation. Peter quotes here from two Psalms there in verse 20, Psalm 69 verse 25, and Psalm 109 verse 8 in our English Bibles. But before that, he gives an account of Judas's death. This account uh, is one of the few places in Acts where there is a synoptic gospel parallel to the story and the two versions don't agree. That version, by the way, is uh, in Matthew uh, chapter 27, verses 3 through 10. I would urge you to go read that on your own. The Acts account and that of Matthew share some details, but they provide two very different interpretations of the significance of the betrayal. Notes Dr. Holliday and others. By the way, there this is... Uh, the only place in Acts where Psalm is quoted in which it does not relate specifically to Jesus. It's relating here to uh, Judas. Scholars notes the quotation from Psalms are from the Septuagint version, which are not the same numbering as we have in our Bibles. Many scholars note that Luke has either modified uh, the Septuagint version that he found, or he's found a version that's been modified that fits his purpose. For example, in verse 20, the Acts author directly quotes the book of Psalms in the Septuagint that would be chapter 28, verse 26 which is 69 verse 25 in our English Bibles. That reads, essentially that line, May their camp be a desolation, and let no one live in their tents. In Psalms, this is, however, a prayer for uh, deliverance from persecution by others, which opens with, Save me, O God, for the waters have come up to my neck. And this prayer is David praying for those that he's been persecuted. In the final phrase uh, of verse 20, let another take this position, uh, is quoted, is a quote from Psalms 108, verse 8, in the Septuagint, which is, verse, uh, which is uh, Psalm 109, verse 8, in our modern English Bibles. That quote is much closer to the text of Acts. May this day be few, may his days be few, I should say, and may others seize his position. This is a prayer, though, uh, Psalm 109, uh, is a prayer of vindication and vengeance against those speaking falsely against David. At least that's the way it's uh, presented there. So it seems that Luke here in Acts has Peter interpreting Judas as that enemy that's being uh, that's there in Psalms? By what logic does he get there? Scholars ask, and they don't all agree. But Dr. Holliday suggests possibly Luke understands this expression in Psalms to fit Jesus' own distress, shame, and dishonor by what has been done to him uh, by this disciple. Judas. Judas is ultimately responsible, the responsible party for what happened is kind of where some scholars come down on. And he likely makes this connection to Jesus with Jesus' uh, enemies giving him on the cross the vinegar uh, to drink, which is not in the Acts version of the story, but it is uh, in uh, the preceding verse uh, here that Peter is using in Psalms. Uh, that is uh, 69 verse 21. They gave me poison for food 
and for my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. That they, that the, the key uh, passion points that are being presented here about wine, vinegar, and gall, uh, depending on which version you read, is found in all the synoptic gospels uh, in some form. I mean, one of those words or some variation of it. Uh, Luke's, Luke, it's in uh, 23, chapter 23, verse 36, and Matthew, it's 27, verse 34, and Mark 15, 23. So this idea of vinegar was likely strongly embedded uh, in the traditional Jesus death story by the time Luke is writing here, uh, uh, they think, and possibly even uh, earlier. Thus, the assumption is that it was a strong point familiar to these particular uh, disciples when Peter is speaking to them is, is the idea. And if not at the time to these disciples, the assumption is being made by Luke when he writes. So in part, Peter is making the point, divine vengeance was poured out on Judas for his actions, which were against God's will, not just against his Lord Jesus. Hence, Judas, by his actions, has asked God for his wrath and indignation is basically the idea here scholars say if you use you know use old testament rules of the eye for the eye and tooth for the tooth and god is a vengeful vengeful god god did what god must do in this situation under their understanding it's, it's where peter's coming from they say presented here in luke's story that's essentially using Old Testament doctrine and philosophy uh, to punish Judas here. Now that one's uh, position must be, that one's position is, is open, Judas's position is open, and therefore under the law it must be seized by someone else. That is likely the logic being used from a theological standpoint, scholars say, to place this interpretation in here. Scholars note that the Septuagint language is frequently shaped in the Greek wording of Acts, not just for this story, but we'll see this somewhat throughout, but in other places we won't go in this kind of detail. The selection of Matthias as Judas's replacement seems straightforward for the period based on Old Testament protocols in Judaism, uh, most of the scholars make that point or some something similar to it. Scholars focus more attention though on the two prerequisites that are listed here for nominating an apostle to replace him or uh, a nominee to replace this apostle, which are continuous presence or witnessing to Jesus from his ministerial baptism, that is when John the Baptist baptized him, onward, and being a witness to the post-resurrection appearances. Understood uh, meaning that to be a witness, a apostolic witness, you had to fit that requirement. And such would not have uh, qualified Paul to have been an apostle. 12, uh, the 12 seats for the kingdom of Israel are now filled by the 12 apostles. Prof prophecy has been fulfilled. These early Jewish Christians, and they're all Jews at this point, we probably shouldn't even call them Christians at this point, thought that Jesus Christ, the Messiah, would be returning very soon on a Pentecost to restore the kingdom of Israel. The 12 tribes now united that had been broken up 700 years earlier. This was classic Jewish theology or theological expectations of the time and setting 40 plus days after the resurrection. These 12 will rule over the tribe in that new kingdom that they expect to be established and the 120 witness 
experiences are there to help them. They are ready for the next Pentecost to happen if and they anticipate maybe that this is going to be the one where that kingdom will be reestablished and they expect that to happen and be executed within the next 10 days. This is how uh, the, the book of scholars, uh, modern day scholars, look at trying to interpret these scriptures that are here. Uh, I hope this gives you some idea of how some of them see it and that you have a good Bible study and we'll hope to see you in our next class session.